Coming up, a flag raising ceremony taking place here on Grand Bahama. Also, hundreds of Grand Bahamians will continue to receive food assistance. And six females arrested. Here why. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. I'm Shishino O. Farkasin. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news as the countdown continues to the country's 47th anniversary of independence, a flag raising ceremony taking place here on Grand Bahama at the Harold de Gregory complex this morning. As Italia Hall tells us, the theme is all about reminding Bahamians to remain hopeful and positive during such times of uncertainty. The theme, pressing onward, a time of hope, triumph and transformation. Now this year's flag raising ceremony was different due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A smaller group of persons were allowed to participate and all of the safety protocols were enforced. The brief ceremony began with a prayer by the president of the Grand Bahama Christian Council. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, bringing brief remarks. The minister reminding Bahamans to celebrate all of the essential workers who are in the fight against COVID-19. As we celebrate the Bahamas, they must take the forefront. We must say thank you to our police. We must say thank you to our Defense Force officers. Thank you to our doctors and our nurses. Thank you to our immigration and customs. To all the frontline workers, we must pay tribute to you. This is a time for us to celebrate you and to say thank you for your service. I also want to pay a special tribute to those who served in the emergency center during Hurricane Dorian. Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest says, Grand Bahama has been faced with many challenges, including Hurricane Dorian and COVID-19, but the island is resilient and will continue to rebound. Grand Bahamians, they say, have a resilient spirit. We have been tested over and over and over again. And though we stumble, though we fall to a knee, we have not succumbed to the pressure, to the disappointments, to the despair. He says the Bahamas will triumph again. We will champion our setbacks and create opportunities as a result of our present trials. 47 years later, our country and our world has been slapped with new norms. Every Bahamian now play a part in transforming our nation for the better. As we raise our national flag, our record of accomplishment show that as a people, we have always rose to the occasion. Independence is a profound feat. Those in attendance were entertained by the Royal Bahamas Police Pop Band. Shortly before 10 a.m., the Bahamian flag was hoisted. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Switching gears, hundreds of Grand Bahamians will continue to receive food assistance. The office rather, of the Prime Minister, Grand Bahama, launching a food assistance program last month in conjunction with the National Food Distribution Task Force appointed by the nation's leader. Now, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, says the program was put in place to ensure food security during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
the Prime Minister announced a national task force. We in Grand Bahama formed a Grand Bahama task force, which was combined by ourselves at the Office of the Prime Minister, as well as the Chamber of Commerce, the Port Authority, and the Christian Council. Uh, we're very pleased that uh, the process for registration now has started. Uh, we've launched a new website, which is www.feedgrandbahama.com. And so we are inviting those who are in need, those who uh, need assistance, food assistance. We want you to log on. It is a very easy process. It is a very simple process uh, to fill out the online form. Uh, you will then be contacted as to when and where you are to pick up your food voucher. Well, Thompson says to date, some 1,800 food vouchers have been distributed and the program will continue for some three months. It, there's a criteria based on, on employment, there's a criteria based on your particular circumstances. Uh, the site will uh, ask you particular questions and then once you fill out that form, an evaluation would be done and then those persons would be contacted uh, who are eligible to receive the benefits. So we want people to reach out. It's an online process. We didn't want to do it where you had to line up and go to a particular location, but it's a very simple process. Go to www.feedgrandbahama.com. And as you know, hundreds of homes were either destroyed or badly damaged as a result of Hurricane Dorian. While well, a newly established modular home builder is expanding its Freeport base with the goal of helping to build weather resilient homes. Jay Philippe has more. Mosaic Modular Homes bringing a new style of home construction to Grand Bahama. Mosaic's fully integrated modular system slots together quickly like building blocks to create a range of unique resilient structures. Edward Rice, president of Mosaic Homes, says the manufacturing of these prefabricated buildings will ensure quality control. We looked at the modular industry and we realized that it's a great idea, but there was nothing out there that was really suitable for places like here. So we've designed something that is not only very wind resilient, we've tested it to 230 miles an hour and we passed quite easily, or very easily. We've also made something very watertight and something that in future storms and so forth, the water can flow under and can flow past and will not get in the house. Edward notes that Mosaic Modular Homes have solved many of the logistical challenges compared to the modern day home construction. The innovative new home ownership option that is now being offered to Grand Bahamians is designed to deliver a market-friendly modular space in a timely and cost-effective manner. We've created a modularized house. And how this comes is it's the, the modules, when you join them together, the strength increases. So we're very flexible in our design and uh, we really can adapt any floor plan that someone would like. Once we agree on a floor plan, we will come up with a cost and a price and at this stage we would then um, uh, we would then work with the local contractor now it's very important the local contractor is very important in this because he is responsible for the foundations so we and also for the building permit and for any outside infrastructure like the supply of electricity and plumbing to the unit all electrics all plumbing are already in the house and so that's all coming so, but the septic and everything is up to the contract. Bohemian architect Arthur Jones weighed in on the new modular home as an option for Grand Bohemians. We find what we call the ideal house. Um, this house that Mosaic Modular uh, has is waterproof. So you're going to live in a waterproof house. Um, in a hurricane, you're concerned about flooding. You're concerned about strong winds. Um, this house seemed to be the answer for both. The modular homes are designed to resist winds up to 200 miles an hour and the homes can resist at least three feet of flooding. We are designing a foundation where you're going down to anchor the house into the solid ground and then you're going to come up with these columns to leave a lot of space for the water to go through. So you're coming out three to four feet above the ground and the water would throw, flow through. And we're designing the house so that it is anchored onto, when we put the columns in, the concrete piles in, we're going to put a ring beam around it uh, because we want to fasten that house to make certain that it goes nowhere. Interested persons 
can visit their website at www.mosaicmodular.com. I'm Jay Philippe, ZNS Network News. In news from the crime beat, a group of young women caught on camera fighting outside a business establishment in the International Bazaar will have their day in court soon. The video went viral on social media this week and police say officers from the Central Division were able to arrest and charge all of the female suspects involved in that fight that was circulating on social media. A total of six women were arrested yesterday and charged by officers of the Central Division and charged with the offense of fighting and violation of the emergency powers order 2020. Now they are expected to be arraigned before the magistrate court next week. Police say they are committed to enforcing the laws pertaining to the COVID-19 pandemic order and all other laws in the country. Meantime, unconfirmed reports reaching our newsroom say there has been a deadly boating accident over on the island of Bimini. Now, we have been told that a U.S. registered vessel with passengers on board crashed into rock just off South Bimini and reports say two persons sustained injuries and were airlifted for further medical attention. While two others were thrown from the boat, the body of one of them was found a short time ago and the search continues for the other person. A male is feared missing. Now this fatal accident at sea comes at a time as officers stationed in Bimini are assisting police in the search for the missing boater. Happy 47th Independence Day, Bahamas. Look where God has brought us. He has surely brought us from a mighty long way. From Grand Bahama to Inagua, we can surely say that God has been good and faithful to us. Regardless of the obstacles, the hindrances, and the challenges that we have faced as a country and a people, we can still lift our hands and say, thank you, Lord. As we continue to journey on through the years, let's continue to stand as a people, united in love and service, standing on the promises of God, standing as a holy and a righteous people, because we know what the Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So we continue to give God thanks and praise for all that he has done and what he is about to do in our country, because we know that God is not through blessing us. I believe a greater, bigger, and better is in store for all of us here in the Bahamas. Let's continue to march on Bahama Land. All right, when we come back, a new team, Queen Crown, to represent the Bahamas. That story and a whole lot more when we return.